We are talking from Revelation 4. And you can read with me if you want to, please, and mark a few things in your Bible that I believe God wants to say to us today. Verse 1, after this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. My brother, my sister, God is calling you up. God is calling you up to him. As the word says, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And many times God will call you up to have his perspective about things happening. As we see in Habakkuk 2. After in chapter 1, Habakkuk was screaming out and saying, God, I'm crying to you. I'm screaming out. Nothing is changing. Nothing is, is changing in my circumstance. But he made the decision in chapter 2. I will go for the perspective that God has. And your watchtower today, my brother, is to say, I will be seated with Christ in heavenly places. Where he has called me to be, to look down into my situation. That you will look down with his perspective. So many times God wants to call you up to be with him. To be with him. To have his perspective in your situation. May we see that. May we hear the voice calling us. Amen. I want us to read further. Let's go with verse 6. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures. And they were covered with eyes. In front and in the back. Clarity. Clarity. God's perspective. Everything. Beautiful. The first living creature was like a lion. The second like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stop. Day and night, they never, never, never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever they lay down their crowns before the throne saying you are worthy our lord and god to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being may give may god give you the insights through the Holy Spirit, me and all of us, that we will understand what is happening before the throne of God. The four living creatures are crying out day and night, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. My brother, my sister, so many times we made the word holy cheap. Maybe not us, maybe others in the past. Holy as if to say we're supposed to live holy. That means we mustn't be naughty as we must do the right thing. It's not about doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. The word holy. The, holy has to, holy, the word holy has to do with he, God is uncomparable. He is set aside in such a way that there is no words to compare him with anything else. Too many times in our lives we can compare him in temptation that i have a temptation to do this but i know i must do that but my victory starts with seeing him for who he is uncomparable you cannot compare him with anything you don't have the words even to compare him with everything and that's in the word holy in the holy word holy is the awesome beauty uncomparable awesomeness of god 
and 24 7 right through for eternity the four living creatures will cry out that god cannot be compared with anything with anything he is not there to be compared with anything else his beauty his splendor it is there holy 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 is the lord god almighty so it was uncomparable his awesome beauty so it is who was and is and is to come and the revelation through the holy spirit that you will take it and say god open my eyes so that when i look at my past when i look at today when i look at my future in the center of all of that will be your awesomeness your awesome beauty your uncomparable presence in my life and that beauty god has set in your spirit where your spirit reborn is perfect before the lord god will come and god will do it my brother my sister i need to grow up in my spirit your spirit is perfect when you gave your life to christ but your spirit is still immature now i will always be a child of god but i must grow up to be a son of god in the son i become a son of god you with me before the father you will always be child but i need to grow up to become a son in the son as a child i'm declaring that i will be always dependent on him and with the attitude of innocence to enter the kingdom but when i've entered the kingdom then i must grow up in the kingdom to become the son of god and the son of god is where my spirit is becoming strong because i feed my spirit with the word of god that means you read the word you get into the word if you like it or not if you emotionally feel attached or not attached to the word so if you feel frustrated if you feel it's doing nothing for me and my mind is wondering this and that get the soul in line that soul cannot determine what's happening in you because your identity is not in your soul identity is not in your emotions and what's happening around you your identity is in your spirit amen and from that place you live as a worshiper in spirit and truth truth the word but then the truth must become alive in my spirit then my spirit becomes mature but if i don't feed my spirit with the word and my spirit don't mature then my being a child i will become childish and i don't know and childishness is then when i grow up and if somebody didn't greet me or said something wrong i get an attitude and i close my heart or things are going like this there's no time with the word my prayer life it's up and down it all depends on what i'm going through that is childish relationship that's okay for the day when i gave my life to christ but even that day it's it's not like that because that day you were very passionate amen but when i grow up to become a son then it means even if emotions or circumstance or intellect or opinion in my soul is going like this i will go from strength to strength from glory to glory from god's beauty to more of his beauty to more of his beauty more and more to be set aside holy holy set aside for him and for him alone and that's how i grow in holiness because to define his beauty to open up his beauty is only through articulating this the word of god may god help you may god help me in jesus name but if we understand how the four living creatures through their existence declare his awesome beauty so you me and you are called today to declare his beauty through our lifestyle through who we are but you know when i looked at this quite a way back the four living creatures i also saw and as you maybe also saw in the book ezekiel the prophet ezekiel who saw who saw the four living creatures exactly the same exactly the same the lion the ox the man the eagle 
And God took me once to Luke. You can write that down. Luke 2 verse 52. Luke 2 verse 52. And he says, Jesus grew. Jesus grew in four facets. Amazing. He grew in four specific facets. Now, as child, I must grow up to become a son. In the son. What did Jesus grow up to be? In that what he already had. But as a human being, he grew up to be actually who he was already. It says in stature. He grew up in stature, in wisdom, in favor with God, and favor with man. Four facets. Stature, wisdom, favor with man, favor with God. And then I saw the whole facet of these four living creatures and these four facets. First of all, my brother, what's, what's the picture of the line always about? Stature, leadership. Hello? You need to grow, I need to grow in stature. As like the line of Judah. Amen? That God's stature, the God type of leadership will rise up in me. Not leadership because I have talents. Not leadership because I have abilities. Not leadership because I maybe have a lot of money. Not leadership because I'm successful. But leadership because the line of Judah is living in me. That's when I will be protected in my leadership. And when my leadership will not destroy my future. The leadership capacity in me. If it's found in Christ. Then he's not growing just in stature. Like we see the lion before the throne. We see Jesus grew in wisdom. We see the ox. Wisdom, my brother, my sister, is about understanding how to take a principle and practically put it on the ground. You just have the wisdom how to be a wise builder. You just know how to build wise. You have the wisdom as a wise virgin, how to use the time effectively. You're practically effective. Time-wise, you are effective. Wise builder, wise virgin. His wisdom is making you practical. That's the ox. As a servant. As a servant. Then number three. Favor with man. Favor with man. Jesus grew up in favor with man. And before the throne we see the face of the man. One of the four creatures. I'm going to leave that one there. In favor with God. And we see the picture of the eagle. The eagle, eagle is also always associated with that absolute sharpness. That absolute accuracy with the wind. Where in the word the wind is many times depicted with, with the Holy Spirit. That the eagle is not fighting the wind. He's going with the wind. That the favor of God on your life, first of all, is not to have certain blessings. The favor of God is that you can be with the Spirit. You can flow with the Spirit. You can be accurate in the Spirit. You can have the, this dimension between your Spirit and His Spirit. That, first of all, is the favor of God on you. That you can have this intimate, accurate relationship. That, that from your spirit you can behold who he is, his beauty, and he is speaking to you. His heart to you, your heart to him. That is the favor of God. Amen. May we all grow in those four facets. As Jesus grew, Luke 2, 52. And as we see the four living creatures close in the center to the throne of God. Always, always, always. Declaring he is worthy, he is holy, he cannot be compared. He eyes all around, the eyes all around, what is he talking about? They can see everything as it's supposed to be. And when you can see everything, everything, everything in every facet of your life as it's supposed to be, you cannot but declare there's no one like him. There's no one like him. 
And may you grow in that wisdom, my brother, my sister. May we grow in that wisdom to see more and more and more the beauty of God. And if you believe you are seeing more of Him, the more you will declare that He knows everything. And without Him, you know nothing. Life will be beautiful. But let's go for that eternal quality of life. John 17, 3. Hey? This is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, and the one that you have sent, the Son. As the Holy Spirit opens it up for you to know. That is eternal life. Not first the streets of gold and the this and the that. Hello. God will help us. Amen. And then out of that, I was amazed when I had to look. God took me to the four Gospels. You know, the four Gospels is all the same. It's about the birth of Christ and path made ready through John the Baptist up to crucifixion, death, burial, rose from the dead, and ascension. The same gospel, but why four times? Amazing. Four creatures before the throne. Four facets that he grew in. Hello? The four gospels. And when you look into it and see when uh, all these guys that did major study about everything, but if you allow the Holy Spirit to open it up for you, they say that Matthew, there's a major focus on the authority of God. Not in one of the other three Gospels. You find it so many times when it, God is talking about the kingdom of heaven is like this. In the parable. And then the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like this. But it's never so intensely over and over and over and over spoken about in the other three Gospels. A lot about the authority. Authority of God. Even when at the end. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, because I have the final authority, therefore, go make disciples, baptize them, teach them, and see, I will be with you till the end of the age. A focus on his authority. As you all know then, what we say, Jesus grew in stature, the picture of the lion. God wants to develop his stature in you. And in that, you find the leadership. Now, in all these four facets, you know, you, like we always say, you don't find the false 11 rand because there is no true 11 rand. You only find the false 10 rand, and it confirms that there is a true. You don't use the swear word Buddha because he's not the true God. You, they use the name Jesus as a swear word because he is the true God. <laughs> Hello? But so out there in the world, when they want to define your personality, even in the workplace, some of it very excellent. You're one of the four trees, or you're one of the four this, or you're one of the four that. And then you, they also do the disc profile. I know you have uh, nobody tell me that. It's a melancholic and a hydraulic and what's the other good? All that type of personalities. And now you find also the disc profile. Who knows about the disc profile? Some of you guys. The disc where you are a dominant leader, leader, authority, or an influencer, relational person, relational person. S, steady supporter. Hello, the servant. And the C, where with compliance, you want accuracy. Like with the eagle, eagle, there's accuracy. Exactly the four facets. But now the danger is when they th say, according to this test, you are more a leader and not necessarily a people person. At that stage, that's your strong point, and God will un use you in your uniqueness. But you know, Jesus is not 80% leader, 20% servant. 60% in relational capacity and 30% in accuracy. Uh, no, 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 no. He's 100% in everything. If I'm crucified with Christ, I no longer live, but he lives in me and through me, then this absolute 
perfect godly balance is in my life. You are an, can be an excellent leader with excellent capacity with relationships and people, excellent as a practical servant, as a practical man, woman, excellent as a spiritual man walking with God. And if Christ is living through you, more and more and more balance will come into your life. We have a course about this, about eight sessions. We did it one Sunday, a few Sundays way back. About for seven Sundays, all about this, these principles, you will find it in a course or so, Leaders as Pioneers. Seven sessions about just this, what I'm trying to do in a half an hour. So I challenge you to please get into this so that you will have godly balance. And balance is that what Jesus grew in, you are growing into. To become more and more like him. That doesn't mean if you're a strong leader that you must now stand back so that you can become more those facets. No, 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 no. We'll talk just now about it. We are, we've spoken about, let's go back. We've spoken about Matthew, hey? And the authority, the lion. And I give you one word, breakthrough authority. There's a breakthrough authority in you. You have authority to always break through. You come into a situation, that situation has not the final authority. Your abilities doesn't have the final authority. But God as the leader in you will give you a breakthrough in every situation. That his authority will come through in the name of Jesus Christ. So you stand as a leader in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will always have authority to break through that what is not from him. Amen. Amen. You're a man of breakthrough because of him. Let's say I'm a man and a woman of breakthrough. All right, let's choose one of the two. Okay, hallelujah. All right, second one, book of Mark. They say the key verse in the book of Mark is where Jesus said, I've come not to be served, but to serve. We see that in the book of Mark. And in that, I mean, just take that part, then it is, you're not accurate in the word of God. If you take it out of context. But if we look at the second facet, second figure before the throne of God, we see the ox that is always depicted with servanthood, always with servanthood. Jesus said, I came to serve, not to be served. But that's only true in the context of the big, full picture of who he, who he is. Amen. And so me and you, we're supposed to understand how to be servants. I give you the word practical effectivity. Practically, you can be effective every time. We see the picture of the ox. We see Jesus grew in. Wisdom, not just stature, but wisdom. But wisdom is how to practically put it on the ground. You must grow in wisdom so that you will have a practical lifestyle as a child of God. This practical is not, you know how to put together an engine. This is practically everything that God has for your life. And the role that you, that you must play in society and the calling that you have where God has placed you. Practically, you know how to put it on the ground. Uh, hello, you are here? That's number two, the ox. That's the book of Mark, with that focus on it. Third one, we see the book of Luke, from Luke. Luke was a medical doctor, and not in one of the other four Gospels, Jesus is so many times called as the Son of Man. The son of man, the son of man is like this. The son of man did this and the son of man did that. Him as human, as human being. He was so human that the people he grew up with said, no, 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 that's the son of Joseph. That's not the son of God. But you cannot just see that facet of who he is. So I cannot just say, I'm a people person. You know, I'm the influencer. I'm more a people person. Yes, God will use you in your uniqueness. 
But it's never without the other three facets. If Christ is living through you. Then your personality is not your God. Your personality is not your gifting. But Christ is the one living through you. And in that you must find your future and your destiny. Are you with me? That's the book of Luke. Then lastly, book of John. We're talking about the eagle. We're talking about Jesus growing in stature with, in stature and wisdom, favor with man and favor with God. Now we see the book of John and how this John, like he saw revelation, he saw in the spirit. This was a man that understood how to, to see in the spirit when he wrote revelation. But also in the book of John, it's all about God, who is God. So it starts even with, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. From way back in the beginning, when we see in the Spirit, He was there right from the beginning. But He explained Himself as a Spirit being through His Word for us here on earth. And then He puts out the seven facets of who Jesus is, and where, what in our vision statements right out there, his disciple with the good shepherd with him. Build with the bread of life into people's lives. Train with the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the true vine. Jesus the door of the sheep. Jesus the light of the world. So we can carry on, carry on, carry on. How many times, especially in the book of John, Jesus is talking about the Father in me, me and the Father, and you in me. You will find all thousands of principles about who he is as God. About accuracy in the Spirit. How to be accurate as the eagle. As the eagle. Amen. Now I just want to put all this together. In one of the sessions, what we do, we take like... Three oranges, put it together, and we put one orange on top. Now I say, if the one on top, this, at this stage in your life, is leadership. Leadership, breakthrough authority. And God is using you with breakthrough authority to lead in many ways. It cannot be without the other three facets supporting it. Otherwise, your leadership is a curse. Your leadership is a curse. Why? What's the other three facets if this is leadership? On this side, about spiritual accuracy. What is he talking about? Whatever you do, you will do it as if unto the Lord. In your leadership, you do it as if unto the Lord. Are you with me? You lead with the leader in you. It's like you need to go and hear from God. You cannot just do Based on the success of yesterday, you cannot just do because you're, you're a leader, you can think on your feet. You can make the decisions like this. You can see the opportunities. So much more, Mr. Leader. You better make sure you are spiritually accurate. Are you with me? That facet of not just the lion, but also the eagle. You need to see in the spirit. Not just as a leader, see the opportunity. Otherwise, you will mess up. And your leadership will be your downfall. What is the other one? The man. As a leader. No, I'm not a people person, you know. I, I, I'm more a leader. As a leader, you better know the heart of the people. And that your heart is connected with the heart of the people. Jesus Christ is the leader. And God's heart is with the people. And, and he wants the people's heart to be with him. So the role model, model, model of leadership, God's heart with the people and the people's heart with him. Are you with me? Like a father's heart with a child and the child's heart with a father. So it's supposed to be from a place of relationship that you will have relational capacity. Is that the third one that we gave, hey? Relational capacity. And what was the third one? Servanthood. As a leader, I have relational capacity. I have spiritual accuracy. And as a leader, 
I'm practically effective. I know how to serve. Because your leadership is to serve the people. He came as a leader, but he served humanity. And he served that what the Father had in his heart. And that was the role model. So as Jesus grew in that wisdom, you as a leader need to grow in wisdom. That your wis God's wisdom will protect your choices as a leader. God's wisdom will protect your choices. Amen. That's a leader where your leadership capacity is not a curse. That it will be at the end of the day to build your own kingdom with your capacity as a leader. Uh -uh. What was the second one? We said servant. You find a servant and under a curse, the servant is in slavery. You say, I'm nobody's servant. Oh, that's a guy that's childish, that don't grow up in the Son of God. A guy that was not growing up to mature. I'm nobody's servant. He has no perspective about any balance in Christ. Because it's an honor to serve. But when you hide as a servant because you don't know how to relate to people, you got hurt. So no, I'm more the Martha in the kitchen. You know, I'm, I'm more a servant. And you can be very practical and it can be part of what God has called you to do. To do, not who you are, but what you must do. There's a lot of practical stuff. There's a lot of serving. According to certain definitions out there in society. But you, before the Lord, what you do, you do everything as if unto the Lord. Okay. So, we are at point. I don't know. The servant. The servant with spiritual accuracy. The servant, ox, on the one side underneath is the eagle. The eagle. You have favor with God. You have favor with God. You do what you do as if unto the Lord. That's why, as the eagle is saying, holy, holy is God. So in your serving, you do it because God is awesome. Because God is holy. I serve because I love him. I serve because I do what I do as if unto the Lord. If your people say, thank you or not, if they treat me like, or not, I will not get fed up and I will not serve them anymore. I'm not there. Whatever. Be careful to say amen at the right place. God will teach you. Hallelujah. It will not be so. <laughs> okay. May God help us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, so as a servant, I do it all as if unto the Lord. But as a servant, I do it also with relational capacity. It's not because I got hurt in relationship. Now I'm just a servant. I'm just doing this because I'm not a people person. No, I need to mature. And if you got hurt in relationships, you need to get healed in here. Because you must do it driven by love in relationships. Driven by love. That's why I serve and how I serve. I serve in the context of relationship. Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, he went as a servant to the cross but the joy set before him was the joy of knowing this will bring relationship this will lead into relationship for humanity with the father for humanity to be the bride of christ hello so the servanthood in the context driven by love for the sake of relationship it said jesus for the joy set before him he went to the cross as you are with me. It's a lot of principles of an eight hour course put into 40 minutes. But please, see what you can take and then go and do the course. Do the teaching for balance. Okay, what was the third one? Servant with leadership. Well, we're getting there now. Servant, do it everything as if unto the Lord. That's as a spiritual man, the eagle, servant, the ox, also with relational capacity, driven by love, and servant also as a leader. You serve 
as a leader. You do it because God, the leader, told you this is what you will do now. Jesus was full out the leader. He wasn't the leader or the servant. He was a leader when he went on to the cross. He was a leader when he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. He, he was a leader when he was hanging there on the cross and everybody thought it was pathetic. He was a leader. He was a powerful, powerful leader that could say one word. And billions of angels will be there. But as a leader, he hung on the cross. Are you with me? You serve because you have the capacity as a leader to understand to serve. Because the master said, this is how you will serve. Amen. Then your servanthood is not a curse. It's not a shame. It's not a slavery. Because you understand balance in here. Okay, that was number two. Number three was relational capacity. Hey, If... The top one now, God says, you need to relate. You need to get into relationships. What is supporting that is that you come not in performance to people and, and serve for relationship. No, but because you love people, you are serving them in a practical way. It's not just, oh, I love you, my brother. I love you, my sister. On a Sunday, you know, you have all, you know. But... You cannot help somebody. You cannot make a difference. You never have the time or the means or the this. Uh -uh. If you are, you are a people person, you will also know how to practically help people. Be with me that you're also a servant. But as a people person, you can also be spiritually accurate. Because if you're not spiritually accurate, you'll compromise in the relationship. You'll get involved with, with lustful, demonic relationships. You will compromise. In this conversation, you can swear, you can laugh at sick jokes or, or, or sexual jokes. And in this conversation, oh, you can be very holy. Because there's no balance. Your relational capacity is a curse. Because it's not supported with these three facets leadership in you and the leader in you says i will not compromise in what i believe in all my relationships i will not judge people i will not judge people that's leadership as a curse no i will not judge people but i will not compromise in my relationship with god supporting this relational capacity the other facet the ego the spiritual accuracy. What are we talking about? You will stay accurate that the voice of the people will not be louder than the voice of God. Then you are mature. If God wants to use you as a people person, as a relational person. Make sure, make sure that in your relationship there is not a manipulation. There is not a compromise. But and the voice of the people and what they say has not more impact in you than the voice of God. So your spirituality, you as a child of God, is supporting your role in your relationships. Are you with me? There's a lot of concepts, but please, may God help you to follow. And the third one was, we have now relationships. First one, practical, I'm a servant. Yes. I'm a leader, I don't compromise, and then, oh yeah, that's the other one. And the spiritual accuracy, hey? Are you with me? I know how to be a servant practically in relationships. I will not compromise, I will stand with stature, and spiritually accurate, I will hear his voice. Yeah, we've done the three. Last one. You find the man, he says he has favor with God. You're a, a man that can see in the spirit. But you know, if it's not supported by the other three facets of balance, of balance, of what Jesus grew in all four facets, all four facets, if the, the, the point that's standing out in your unique, unique personality is not supported by the other three, remember then personality is a curse. 
personality will stand against what God wants to do. But if it's supported by the other three facets in your life, great. But spiritual man, you will be super spiritual, pie in the sky, some other cloud that's here, the next day, phew, it's gone. See all the visions, see all the this, have all the revelations, but it's floating all around, and you see this, you see that, and you are so spiritual about a lot of stuff. So heavenly minded, no earthly good. You've heard that one before, eh? So if you understand, you have favor with God, and you can see in the spirit as an eagle, this needs to be supported that you can communicate it, relational capacity, that you still can communicate to the hearts of people, and that you are still a human being. Ah, you with me? You're not so such spiritual, and so many times we can go for the supernatural, and we must go for the supernatural. But my brother, my sister, when you go for the supernatural, it must make you to be more effective in the natural. Because God has called you to be a natural human being. The supernatural manifests. And many times we say we go for the supernatural, but we actually mean we come to the point to say, no man could have done this. He's, this is God. Amen. So we go for the supernatural. So that at the end of the day, when we say this was supernatural, we're actually saying, no human being did this. Only God. Only God. And that is the context of how we go for the supernatural. But if you went for the supernatural and only God did and give that, gave that breakthrough, then it makes you to be more effective in the natural as human beings worshipping God. Living for Him. Are you with me? So this is a, super, this is a spirit man supported by a healthy natural relationships with people a spirit man then can put it down practically and he's not so far in the spirit and so and so out there that nobody can understand what on earth is that guy talking about in the sense of he's seeing this vision he has that dream and it's good it must be there he has this dream and that thing but he's just carrying on super spiritual wrong God is a practical God. So you, God wants you to what you see in the spirit to put it down in a practical way. When you look at John and what he saw in Revelation, he was a spirit man. Come on. But just go before Revelation. You find 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. The three letters of John. Then he gets really, really practical about how you're supposed to love one another, forgive one another, and be with one another. And if you're not practical with one another, you don't even love God. You, do, you hate your brother. So he's talking practical. John the Apostle said, You say you love God, you say you're spiritual, but rubbish. You're not spiritual. Okay, just to stand like that in the Bible. He's, you say you love God, but if you hate your brother, in a practical way, you don't love one another. You're a liar. You don't love God. So in the letters, John is bringing through, you need to be practical in your relationships. Are you with me? So he's not just pie in the sky, in that sense, if it was just revelation. But even in Revelation, such a lot of practical things coming through. Amen. Are you with me? So in all these four facets, what do we see? You need to be a leader. Amen. Like the line of Judah. We see especially through the book of Matthew. With breakthrough authority. You need to be a servant because you have God's wisdom. If you have God's wisdom, you will be a servant. You will be practically effective. You need to be a human being and live as a human being, a healthy human being in relationships. And you're supposed to live in such a place where you are a spirit being, not just a human being, but a spirit being, the two connected. Absolutely connected. Leadership and servanthood connected. Absolutely like two sides of a coin. You and God, you and people. You cannot say you love God if you hate people. Sorry. Two sides of one coin. 
And so we need to grow in balance, that there's balance in our lives. I pray that will become a reality for you, my brother, so that as the four living creatures before the throne of God, as the lion will declare there's no one like you, that your leadership capacity, your stature, will never become your kingdom, your focus. But with every piece of stature and leadership in you, you will declare. And people will look at your leadership and they will know he's following the leader, Jesus Christ. Hello? That in your servanthood, they will not see you are hiding or you have issues and you better be thanked. Otherwise, you're going to stop serving. And, but they will know, they see you are serving as, as if unto the Lord. You see it as a privilege to serve others and serve the kingdom. That's a healthy man, ambassador of Christ. Like the ox before the throne of God. And then before the throne of God, the human being. That people will look at you and they can relate to you. You're not so spiritual that the guy out there cannot relate to you at all. I'm not talking about compromise. I'm not talking about that your, their flesh, their demonic flesh can relate to you because you are absolutely in compromise in the flesh. I'm not talking about that rubbish. I'm saying that they can relate to you as a human being to a human being. Because you know how to be human. But someone before the throne of God that can declare there's no one like you as a human being. But then as a spirit being, that you know from your spirit how to connect with the Holy Spirit. As the Bible says, deep call unto deep. The natural man cannot first understand the spiritual things. But Holy Spirit, through your spirit, can open it up. Who's the Father? Who is Jesus? So that your life can become Christ. Because Holy Spirit, through your spirit, opening up for you what is life all about. To be like Christ. And that is you as spirit being that needs to grow. That makes you better than a baboon. Because you're a spirit being. Baboon is not a spirit being. Amen. Amen. My brother, my sister, please, I challenge you so that like the four living creatures before the throne of God, you can come before the throne of God and that your worship will be accurate. And your worship before the throne of God will not be according to your personality. But according to the fullness of what God has created through his son. Because in Christ, you find your life in that place of absolute balance. And Christ in you is the Lord with absolute balance who grew in all those four facets. God come and set us free from a place where your balance is not found in us. We are crucified with you, Lord, and we no longer live, but it's you living in us and through us. Jesus Christ, you as the leader, come and live through us. Jesus Christ, you as a servant, come and live through us. Jesus Christ, as the Son of Man, come and live through us. As the Son of God, come and live through us. Please, Lord, help us to be accurate ambassadors of who you truly are. Thank you, Lord, that you will use each one of us in a unique way because we are different members with different functions in the body of Christ, Lord. But as children of God, we stand with one identity, each one of us, Lord, and that is not found in our personality. That is found in who you are. Teach us how to learn from one another, not to be threatened by one another, not to be jealous of one another in different functions. When the one function more as a typical leader and one more as a typical servant. Forgive us, Lord, but that whatever we do, we will really do it as if unto you. Thank you for the honor and the privilege in how you've called us to be. And that we will walk in that calling. Because we love you. Thank you that you set us free in your truth for that lifestyle. In Jesus' name, so we pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen.